Hi, welcome to this video where I'm going to take some photographs of birds on my new reflection pool. Welcome to this video. You can see here my reflection pool that I built in a previous video. So if you haven't checked that out, go and check that out now because this will mean more to you to see how I built this. But today is the first day that I'm going to try and take some photographs using the reflection pool. So it'll be a bit of trial and error to try and work out what the best angles are, what the best arrangement is at the end of the pool to get good photographs. So I might not get very much today, but it's going to be a learning process. It's three days now since I built the reflection pool, so it's had two days just to sit here and allow the birds to get used to it. And I have seen quite a lot of birds landing on the perch and on the table at the end and even going into the water to drink. So I'm hopeful today that I should get something, but I might have to just tweak the display at the end based on what I, what I see from when I'm sitting in the hide. So I'm going to just talk you through the equipment that I'm going to use today, then we'll get into the hide and get cracking. So if you've seen any of my other videos, you've probably seen me using this bit of kit before. The body that I use is a Nikon D850 and the lens is a 200 to 500 and this is a Nikon lens as well. It's a really great lens, it's got good length and it's really sharp as well. I'm really pleased with it. Now the only reason that I use Nikon, it's not because I'm sponsored or anything like that, my channel's way too small for, to be sponsored, uh, it's literally because the first DSLR that I bought was a Nikon D70 way back, probably about uh, 12 or 13 years ago. And once you invest into a, a system, then you buy the lenses that fit that camera. And so I've just never moved away from Nikon and that really is the only reason. What I've also got attached to the camera is a cable release. Now this allows me to sit in the hide with the camera on a bean bag and I can trigger the shutter just by pressing this. And this means that the camera doesn't move and I get much sharper shots with no camera shake. Just from a recording point of view, if anybody's interested, I use a Zoom H1 voice recorder, which is connected to this Rode microphone here. And this allows the audio to be much clearer than just using the camera's onboard microphone. And the camera itself that I'm using to record this is a Canon G7X Mark II. set up in the hide now. I've got the camera out through the opening pointing down the reflection pool. Um, because the opening is so low I've had to sit on the floor but I've put myself a pillow down here and then the seats that I normally sit on um, I'm using as a backrest because it could end up getting quite uncomfortable before very long so I can probably only imagine myself being here for about an hour because I'm getting on a bit and the bones start to hurt after sitting on the floor for a long while. Because I've only just come in and I've been making some noise, nothing gets landing on the end of the reflection pool, so I'm going to have to sit and wait for a little while. So already looking through the camera at the end of the reflection pool, I think that I might need to lower the perch closer to the water to get better reflections. But I'll do some test shots this morning and, and just see what kind of results I get. So this morning has been pretty useful. 
I've not got very many good photographs, but I've got lots of information. Now, I've made a note of all the things I've been thinking about on the phone, so I'm going to read from the phone just so I don't forget anything. But first of all, I can say that I've definitely got a proof of concept. I know that it will work. I know that the birds are using it. And I know that given the right light and the right circumstances, I'll get some good photographs. I have realized that the liner is visible through the rocks at the back. Now, I think this is partly due to the fact that I've lost quite a bit of water, um, probably a good inch, even over just um, a couple of days. There's, the water has definitely gone down from what it was, and I can only put this down to evaporation because I've checked around and I can't see any leaks. So I'm gonna have to keep that topped up. What I've also realized is a slightly higher position of the camera means that you can see more of the water in front of the bird and this gives a better reflection. If you're very low to the water, you haven't got much water in front before you start hitting the front of the reflection pool. The time of day that I've been taking this was very early in the morning and it doesn't actually work with the position that it's in. I get backlighting and it really doesn't work for good photographs. So later in the day, I think will be more effective lighting. I also found that there's been an issue with the breeze causing a slight ripple in the water. Even just the smallest amount of ripple can spoil the shot. I think it'll need to be really, really still to get the best possible shots. Also, I need a way of skimming off um, all the rubbish from the top of the pool. Probably a net will do that quite nicely, just to make it clear, because there's bits of fluff and leaves and all kinds of things that have landed on there. What I need to do now is get some cobbles or pebbles to lift up um, the end. One to cover the liner, but I found that the most effective shots of birds are when they're very close to the water drinking from it because you get the best reflections. So I'm gonna give a more of a beach-like effect at the end to allow the birds to get close to the water and then me take a shot of them. So I'm gonna make a trip to the garden centre to see if I can find some cobbles. That's it for the renovation. I've put the pebbles in at the end now, so I've got a much shallower gradient into the water. That should improve the shots because the birds can get closer to the surface of the water when they're drinking. That should improve the reflections. It also hides the liner that I could see this morning. All I've got to do now is wait for the light to come round. So later this afternoon, I'm going to have another go with more favourable lighting and hopefully the wind might drop a little bit as well. It's now a couple of days since you saw me do the work at the end of the pool. Um, putting the rocks in and changing the layout. I have been waiting for the wind to die, but it hasn't. So I'm gonna have a go today um, and just try and pick some still moments where the water is not moving too much. While I've been sitting here, I have been thinking about raising this platform. One, to give me a little bit more of a comfortable um, position, because I'm a little bit hunched over. And also, by raising the height of the camera, I get to see more water in front of the bird. What I've also realized is if you go too high, you start to see the bottom of the pool. I can see the creases in the liner. So there is an optimal angle where you just see reflections and not down into the bottom of the pool. So I think I'll have to leave it where it is. One thing I have noticed with this lens at its shortest focal length of 200 mil, I really struggle to get birds such as starlings in the frame while I'm taking landscape version. 
um, the top of the bird and the bottom of the reflection only just fits in the frame. So I have to turn the camera so it's in a portrait. session for the moment. Um, I'm going to try again a bit later if the wind dies down and if not I'll try again tomorrow. You've just seen the goldfinch that I've got from this afternoon session. I think that's probably the best that I'm going to get with these windy conditions. I'm going to wait for more favourable conditions and then have another go so watch out for that in an upcoming video. To make sure that you don't miss it click like and subscribe and then you'll get informed of all of my future content. But for now, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. The display at the end and is an two, oof, can't speak. Let's try again, couldn't open the door. Ah! How hard can it be to get in the shed? From the, with, there, 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 there.